Hey everyone, welcome back to another Tic Tac Taiko. This week, I have four things you don't want to do when it comes to playing beta. Let's go. When it comes to teaching online like this, I really try to avoid saying what I think you should do as a taiko player because I can't see you. I don't know what your group does. I don't know what your style is. I don't know what your physical equipment or space limitations are. So for me to say what you should do may not apply, but I feel like there are some definite universal don'ts that can be very specific or very general. And so I decided to do some specific don'ts this week when it comes to playing beta or the down drum style. Number one, don't kill the drum. In other words, don't over hit. Now I did say I wanted to do beta specific and you know, you could over hit anything. Beta, naname, yoko uchi, old like any drum you can over hit, but it's beta where you see this the most. Think about everything that goes into a strike on beta. You have gravity, which adds to the force. You have muscle, where you're pulling, throwing it down, that adds to the force. You have all this momentum that's gained through the distance from where you start to where you end. And you have a wrist snap. Now you put all those components together and odds are you have too much power. And a lot of people, including myself at times, are comfortable with almost too much power and it feels good to hit really hard but then there's hitting hard and there's over hitting and over hitting is what i'm talking about today over hitting hurts three things number one is it hurts the drum i mean the drum heads are eventually going to wear out that happens but when you're hitting it really really hard way harder than you need to you're going to cause rips and tears in the head way faster than they normally would it also hurts you the player, you have so much force, you're having to grip really, really tight so your bocce doesn't fly out of your hands. And hitting that hard with so much reverberation going back into your arm, that's not good for your body. There's so much stress required and vibration and, and control going on that hundreds of thousands of times over weeks, over months, over years, you're hurting yourself. And finally, you're hurting the sound. A strong hit on beta can produce a strong Dawn, a resonant, warm feeling, sound. But overhitting kills that. It's harsh, it's abrasive, it can hurt the audience to hear, and it's not pleasant at all. I'm not gonna spend time saying, well, this is what you should do, this is how you should play, because maybe some of the suggestions take and maybe some of them don't apply. But in general, you need to be honest with yourself and ask, do I need all of that force? And if not, then what can I ease up on? Generally, it's going to be that muscle that you don't need. Number two, don't make your bocce parallel. I see more than a few taiko players who, for some reason, really want their bocce to be parallel to each other when they play beta. And maybe if the song hasn't started yet or there's a break in the song where you're just holding position, this is something the composer wants to see, that's fine. You can have all kinds of funky shapes and that's art. But to play with your bocce parallel is asking for trouble. All of you can watch me and hear me talk about why, but until you do it and kind of feel for yourself, you may not really understand what I'm talking about. Having your bocce parallel means your wrists have to bend. So I've got a bend in my wrist that's going this way, and I have a bend in my elbow. If I exaggerate, I essentially have this shape. And I've seen people playing almost that exaggerated. I'm not doing it because it doesn't feel comfortable. But even a small bend here with the bend of the elbow, this, there's nothing natural about this. It doesn't facilitate a wrist snap. If I pull up, I have to extend and now I have two things, two variables to deal with. There's just nothing good about this. And this is like if you had a boxer or a martial artist who was focusing only on the fist and how that fist connects and not thinking about how the body works, not thinking of how to connect with the feet into the floor, use gravity and torque and all of those elements just on what they can see. If you're only focusing on what you can see, you're compensating in other places and it generally doesn't pay off. So the more natural you can play, the better off you're gonna be. And that's something you need to experiment with as well as respect however your group wants you to play. One thing I would add to this, if you want to play parallel, you need to sort of match your shoulders. 
I've got broad shoulders. For me, this would be parallel. Well, it's not going to work on this drum pad. I would need a really large drum, like a Hira Daiko or Mia Daiko, something where I could play like this. And when I do Odaiko, this is what I'm aiming for. But something like a Chudaiko or Shime, you don't have that option. You have to come in to meet the drum where it is, and then you adjust yourself. Now that we're halfway through the list, this is a good time to remind you to go ahead, hit that thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button, makes you a good person. Number three, don't T-Rex. Look, I have nothing against the T-Rex. It's a perfectly fine dinosaur. I'm partial to Stegosaurus myself, but getting off topic. But if you know what a T-Rex looks like, you know it's got little stubby arms. It probably wouldn't make for a good drummer in general. However, what I do see a lot, especially of newer taiko players, is this desire to get close to the drum with your center, with your torso, rather than moving back away and having a more open pose. This isn't natural at first. So people that want to get close tend to wind up with T-Rex arms. In fact, I see a lot of Western percussionists who take taiko workshops tend to want to lean in, this feeling of getting closer. So, okay, that's natural. But natural in this case doesn't necessarily make for a good anything. If you're someone who likes to play up close, if you tend to T-Rex, you know, I don't want to say what you should do. I'm trying to avoid that. But this is not good for ergonomics. This is not good for dynamics. This is not good for the visual. You're losing a lot of what makes Tycho beautiful to the audience. So experiment with distance and space and you'll find that the T-Rex, probably not the dinosaur you want to be. Number four, don't hit flat. Hitting flat is never a good sound unless you're specifically going for it. In Western percussion, the snare has a metal ring around the side and it's, a, it's an actual deliberate technique to hit the rim and the head at the same time. It gives the snare an awesome sound, but that snare, this is Tycho. The best case scenario when hitting flat is to hit flat. And that's actually hard to do consistently. I have to really focus and keep my hand where it is. Now imagine trying to do that from here consistently. It's really difficult. And what happens more often than not is this. Now it's hard to do this consistently, but the, the point I really want to make here is notice that my that my fist or the butt of the bachi is past below the head of the drum. At best, a person is hitting here and continuing through. More likely a person is hitting flat or not even flat, less than flat. And they're feeling like, oh, I've hit something and that's good. But again, the sound is bad, the visual isn't good, but it's hurting the drum. You know, taiko players, we play ka, and if this wasn't uh, a drum pad, you could hear that. But this is a precise technique that's hit with a precise part of the bachi. It's so lighter hits, supposedly lighter hits. But when I am punching down hard piece of wood, hitting the edge of the drum, which is another hard piece of wood, I'm making dents. Small, maybe micro dents, but hundreds, thousands, over months, over years, Drum's not going to withstand that. A drum head will eventually break and you can rehead it. But if I am punching down, which causes this, rather than whipping or striking or throwing or whatever analogy you want, when I'm trying to punch down, I get flat if I'm lucky and I get this when I'm not. And most of us aren't that lucky. How to prevent this? Again, whole other video, but experiment. Try to end your strike earlier. Try to step further away, stand further up. Don't think of punch, think of whip, think of throw. Again, be honest with yourself. Watch your technique in a video, slow it down, do whatever you need to do to first make sure that you're not doing this. And if you are doing this, now you can fix it. And there you have the list of the four don'ts when it comes to peta. You may have thought of some that I didn't. Go ahead and let me know in the YouTube comments below or on the Facebook Taiko group page, either one's fine. In the future, I plan to do some nanome specific don'ts, maybe Katsugi Okero don'ts, maybe some Odaiko don'ts, as well as maybe some general don'ts. But this week, I wanted to do betta. So, until next time, keep on practicing and be well.